I love it. So I want to know how you guys like my little intro that I collaborated with on uh, Anointed Musician. I'm going to remain nameless for now until he gives me permission to mention his name. But I just wanted to get some feedback on how you like the intro. And I hope you was able to hear it because I don't know if it was loud enough. I'm pretty sure it was, but I'm going to play it one more time. And I'm going to talk quickly, real briefly about pain, being painfully gifted. And... Let me rewind and let's play it again. You can still get your life back. Get your life back. Get your life back. Get your life back. I love it. Good for a TV show. Welcome to Get Your Life Back TV. I like that. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking about just doing this real quick thing about being painfully gifted. And it's, I re it really started from me trying to find music to put on some of my videos. And I said, hold up. I have a voice. I can sing a little something, something. All I need to do is get somebody to make me some music and put my own intro instead of trying to find some kind of free royalty, free music to put on my videos. I'm like, well, I have another talent. Let me utilize that. That's what I'm talking about. About utilizing your other gifts and your other passion. And so I said, for now, I'm going to start using my own vocals put it to some music, and then maybe later on, you know, I'll put that out there as a, another side hustle um, to make some extra change and do jingles for some of you guys who may want some music on your videos and little intro stuff. You know, on YouTube, you only could do like three seconds of intro music. However, on other stuff that I do, I could just play the song full out. That would be great. But I want to talk about real quick being painfully gifted. I might have mentioned this before. And I'm going to tag this um, young man I know who has a whole line of clothes that he calls painfully gifted. And I inboxed him and told him that, you know, that title alone, it pulls on my heartstrings. Because I know some people out there battle with that, having so many talents, being multi-talented and gifted. And sometimes you feel like you don't know where to start from because you got all this stuff coming out of you, pouring out of you gifts and talents. It's like, God, where do I start from? And I had a conversation with my daughter earlier. I'm like, oh, Lord, you got the same bug I got. Goodness. And her dad has as well because she has she's talented in many different areas. So I was just trying to, I really coached her today just to try to help her find a focus and main focus in that you can still do some things on the, on the side. Because right now, you know, you're new grad, you're out of college. So of course, you're trying to find employment to just to pay your bills and everything in the meantime. But that's just a seasonal. That's Let's consider that seasonal work and because you got to pay your bills in the meantime, but still working, grinding towards your purpose and your passion, which is in entertainment, in the um, music industry and in television industry. And look for those jobs to audition and do extras and whatever else you need to do in the meantime and build up your social president press presence on social media and out there and just be consistent. So I was just telling her, be consistent in a particular project that you want to work on. Some people call it passion project. Push that. Keep being consistent so you can get um, known out there. And you just never know. But people will see that you've been working at something for a while. And I said, there's a lot of people that we're hearing about now. But, but before, they was actually working in their passion and purpose for like 10, 15, 20 years. We're just coming to find out about them. But I was speaking to her about you be able to appreciate the journey, the struggle, the um, doors that didn't open. Because when you get through the doors that do open, you'll appreciate it and you won't have a spirit of entitlement. Well, because things were thrown at you immediately, you didn't appreciate um, where you are, appreciate what you're doing. But when you have grinded and you struggled and you went through the whole development phase and learning, which is great too because you learn a lot of things in that journey, you appreciate where you are. When those doors open for you, you'll be so happy and humble about it because you know what it took for you to get there. So I said, this is, this is the time for you to kind of go through um, uh, trying to get into whatever industry you know that she was trying to, she's trying to get into that that's really not a new song I said most new graduates can tell you sometime it took them a year or two before they actually got the ideal job or I don't want to say job the ideal position in their industry or what they want to do and because my daughter has that entrepreneurial spirit too that's starting to grow in her now she understands that at the end of the day is being able to set yourself up 
at the right time where you can do your own thing, call your own shots, if that's for her. And I know that's in her as well, where you can have the freedom to do the things you really love to do and have that time. And right now you're building yourself up. So I always tell her, don't, don't, you know, be too hard on yourself and enjoy the process of learning and growing. Enjoy the journey, appreciate the journey and see the bigger picture. And that, you know, you'll be that person that'll be inspirational to somebody else because you'll be able to share your story. So this is what I'm telling her now to do. And so, you know, so, you know, we coach our kids as well, um, just to help them along the way, even learning from our mistakes. So things that I didn't know growing up, I wish somebody would have saw my musical talent and all that when I was young. I'm sure by now I would have had out CDs and everything, but it's never too late. And so I'm utilizing everything that God has given me now. And, I, and so I'm, I'm not ashamed. I always say, look, I'm still unfolding. I'm still getting my life back. <laughs> I'm still um, tapping into those things that I possess that God has given me. And God is connecting me with people who see that vision and who's who wants to collaborate, who wants to pour into me, who wants to use their talent and their gift. And actually it's a win-win situation because we become a blessing to each other. You know, put our, bring our gifts and our talents together. But I felt, sometimes I feel that way. So I was telling a young man with his, that has the whole clothesline, painfully gifted. I said, you don't know, you just blessed me with that. I said, because I actually feel that sometimes. Even to the point where there's times I felt just like crying, like, God, I feel like I have all these things and I don't know what to do with them. And I didn't get the opportunity when I was real young to really operate in them because I didn't have those connections growing up in the hood. I didn't, some people do, some people don't. I didn't have that. I didn't have somebody say, you know what? You need to, you know, get me in a studio and let's lay some tracks down. Let's get out there. You know, back in the days, it was all about getting with record companies and everything. So I didn't have the know-how and, and, and the connections to do that because it's not always having money. And when there were opportunities for me to kind of, I was telling somebody earlier to um, do that at the time being young, I didn't have thousands of dollars to spend time in the studio because there's people I knew who had studios and they was like, you know, I charge $200, $300 an hour. Who has that at 16, 17, 18, 19 year old, at years old? I didn't have that type of money to go in the studio and work. And it takes hours to do stuff like that, to work on a song or a project. I, Cheryl didn't have that. And my family didn't have that type of money. So I couldn't take them up on those offers. But now it's easier because you can be, become an independent artist. So an independent um entrepreneur where you do your own well entrepreneurs independent in a sense but you can kind of create your own stuff and get it out there you just have to do a lot of marketing and promotion now again connecting with the right people and it's easy to connect with people now because we you know we got this internet thing going where you can reach out and you can connect with people and so that's a blessing so I look I'm utilizing this so utilize all the opportunities that are available to you um so you can operate in your purpose and in your passion. I'm like, you know, I'm going to use my own music and put it to my, you know, own video or, or live streaming or things that I'm doing in social media. And I, first of all, I love doing it. So it's a passion. And that's the one thing I love about artists from back in the day is that they didn't create music necessarily to make a lot of money to become popular and, and billionaire. They love what they did, whether they was they, poor, starving. If they was an artist singing, they was out there singing. You can find people on the street back in the days just singing and working on harmonizing and, and um, cohesiveness. And somebody just found them out because they was consistent in that grind. They just love what they do. And people like that because they see the passion that you have and they're willing to work with you. Like, you know, they see that this will be a good investment because this person loves what they're doing so they know that you are produce something at the end of the day because it's it's bigger than just trying to make money it's something that you just you know you're going to do and when you have something in you it doesn't die easily especially if you haven't really tapped into it fully yet it don't leave you like music don't leave me i'm find myself singing i sing all the time i sing in my sleep I sing when I'm out there in the public and I'm always humming, not even con so conscious of it because it's just something that I love to do. And somebody always hear me or spot me and go, wait a minute, you sing? I didn't know you had a voice like that. I'm like, yeah, I do a little something, something, something. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to encourage somebody who feel that way, like you're painfully gifted. You don't know where to start from. Just find that first focus on something and just get started. Don't keep waiting and putting it off. Get started. 
You know, I don't care if you have to start doing something for free. Get out there and get your voice out there. Whatever that talent is, that drawing, that painting, whatever you do, get it out there. That music. Just start doing something. You don't know what opportunity God is going to open for you. But if nobody can't find you, it's almost like you wanting to get married again. And you waiting for your husband or wife to knock on that door and have that. Ah. No, you have to position yourself to be out there. You don't have to go desperately looking, but show up and be out there so somebody can find you. How can people find you if you're not out there? If you're not socializing, if you're not networking, you have to start somewhere. Start doing that. Look, like I said, we have social media. You can, like I told my daughter, stop putting your music out there. Just do little um, videos of you singing and, um, and, and even a little stuff she's done already. People have given her a lot of compliments. They want to hear more from her. And I called it today. I said, I want to hear you singing more, darling. So keep putting those videos out there. I love hearing you sing. This is what I prayed for when I had you. Lord, give her a voice. You know, again, I talked about early how I was strategic in my parenting. There was a reason why I would put the headset to my stomach so my daughter can pick up the musical vibes and rhythm because I know that babies um, can feel music and they can pick up rhythm. And so I did that on purpose. It was the intent of having an ear to hear and homegirl can hear. She has a musical ear better than mine, more keen and sharp than mine, Well, she's actually helping me with my notes now. I'm like, excuse me, but this is what I wanted. She comes from a father who's a musician. She comes from me and there's music in the family. And because I did that, I understood that she was going, she's going to come out with some music. So homegirl can sing, dance, act, but she has an ear. She can hear some good music and notes and everything. So I'm like, Okay, so now you got you need to do what you need to do because you already have the tools that you need. God has given you every good and perfect gift. And I know right now it's just a challenge you finding out where to start, where to go. But just start with some kind of focus. Be consistent in that one area while you work on just maybe a few other things. But you know what? If you're working on the same things that all connect together, music and and um, singing and all of that, that all works together. So it's not like you're doing something completely different. You went to school, you got a degree in the in same industry, and maybe more television, but it's still entertainment. So you're not like way off doing something completely different. And sometimes that's not even bad. So anyway, I just want to encourage somebody to do the same thing. Find that focus and just stay with it. But And sometimes it can feel like you, you're in pain when you got all these things and you don't know what to do with it. Like, oh my God, you can see yourself doing this. And I'm talking about those who really have a talent and gift. Not just wanting to do stuff because somebody else doing it. But stuff that you know you can do and you can do well. And, e and even areas that you anointed in. It's so easy for you to just go out and do stuff like that. I get songs like nothing. They come to me in my sleep. I get the lyrics. I get the melody. Now, and they all come. Sometimes I get it together. And sometimes I get it separately. Just like messages or um, sermons would come to me. Still come to me. I wake up with a message to preach. So I know that that's part of my call. Because it's not something that I've done on my own. It's stuff that just come to me. And I'm, wake me up in the middle of the night. Sometimes your gift and your talent and your purpose will wake you up in the middle of the night. And you have to write stuff that stuff down. Some kind of way where you can keep and you won't forget it. Especially if you're a dreamer like me. Where you always get stuff. I get prophecy. I get, um, like I said, music and songs. I even get poetry. And I have to get up and write it down so I won't forget it. Because my brain works like that. It's like, it's, it's constantly moving and moving. So I know that's something that God taught me I have to do. Write this thing down. I was doing that before I heard people start saying that. Write it down. Make it plain. That's something that God was doing already. I'm like, thank you, God, for that strategy, because you know my mind. <laughs> it just goes and goes and goes because I'm a thinker. So one, one of the challenges of being a thinker like that and a visionary is knowing when to pace yourself and also knowing how to repurpose stuff. Write it down so you won't forget it because I'm telling you, it's not for naught. It's not for nothing. It's going to be a time for you to utilize or to use something that you have recorded or saved in the past. And that's just what I'm doing. So there's things, there's songs I've written in the past that I'm going to record now. There's poetry. Matter of fact, I think I recorded, I'm get, oh, I was about to, um, a poem that I wrote and I copy written a while ago. And it was a blessing to people. I read it out loud before a particular crowd a couple of years ago at a church. And it was like, you wrote that? And I was like, I was shocked too. Like, you wrote that? 
<laughs> but I realized I don't give any glory to myself. All the glory belongs to God. But I'm also recognizing what he's given me. So there's nothing wrong with acknowledging what God has given you because he's given, given it to you for a reason. And that is to touch the lives of other people. Some kind of way of inspiration. That's right. There's a reason why I call myself inspiration and transformation strategies because I understand what God has given me. Understand what God has given me. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging. It's a difference between boasting and, and bragging um, on yourself. Um, There's a difference between that and acknowledging what God has given you and utilizing that because he didn't give it to you for no reason at all. Know that. Just like he set different ministries in the church and different people, you know, different um, offices of apostle and pastor and evangelist and what am I missing? Prophet, teacher, and all of that. He set that in the church for a reason. He was intentional about it because everybody have their particular gifting and anoint, anointing that they bring to build up the body of Christ. He gives us talents and he gives us um, wisdom and gifts for us to use. And it's, it's for people, it's not for us. <laughs> I'm not going to sit and prophesy to my side day or preach to myself all day. Now, yeah, you'll be the first one that most of the time when God give you stuff, it is for you first many times and then you share it with somebody else. But it's for the masses. It's for other people to hear. It's for a nation of people. Again, when I say nation, it's not necessarily millions of people. It can be 5,000, 500 people, whatever. Still, there's a nation of people that God wants you to be a blessing to. So don't forget that. So that way you won't forget who's the giver of gifts and who's giving you the gift and talent from the first place. The originator, the alpha, the omega, the creator. He's creator, so he's creative. So I just wanted to encourage somebody today, but I just thought about that. I said, man, I feel that way sometimes. It's like a burden that God gives you. And it's a, it's a good burden. It's not a burden that's like the world. Like he said, you know, take his yoke upon him and learn of him. For his burden is easy and his burden is light. Because the burden that comes from the world can be quite depressing. <laughs> but when God gives you a burden or something to do, sometimes you feel ambiguity about it because, because of Sometimes it's a great thing that he wants you to do. And you're like, God, how am I going to do this? At the same time, you feel joyful about it because you understand that he's given you a task and a mission and something that you have to fulfill. And all you just need is God to give you strategy, wisdom, connections, I mean, all of that, uh, impartation, revelation, and, and strategy, all of that to, kind of, to execute what you need to do and get started somewhere. So that's the good burden that you get from God. It's different than the world. You know, the world is heavy. It's, it's, a, it's a negative heavy weight. It's like, my God, and it's the trials and tribulations and all of that stuff that we battle while we're here. But it's awesome knowing that you have something that God has given you, and it won't go away. That's another way you can tell that that's something that you are called to do. It won't go away. It follows you. It's like a cloud. Everywhere you go, it's on you. People see it. They call it out. You can't even hide. <laughs> you can't even hide from it. It's like, oh my God. Somebody calls it and points it out. Okay, God, I surrender. What do you want me to do? Where do I start from? Ask them the question. I put up a post earlier. Did you ask God about your purpose? Did you ask him? Keep asking him. You may not get the answer right away. And you may be actually doing what you're supposed to be doing. And so the answer is going to come. You just got to be patient. And that's not easy. I'm the first. That is not easy. Because you like, God, am I doing this right? I need you to check in with me. You got to give me some kind of signs. And he'll do that. He'll do it through different people and avenues and places. And, you, and you'll feel it in your gut. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And sometimes you don't feel that. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to be doing now. And that's okay. Because that's part of it too. But anyway, uh, my break is over. I'm going to get right back. I had to come home real quick so I can do this video. Grab me some lunch and run back to work. But anyway, I appreciate anybody who tuned in. I hope I was inspiring to somebody so you can get your life back. I'm going to play one more time while I go. And until we tune in again, get your life back. Don't forget if you want to connect with me, go to get why life back at, dot, at um, get why life back .com. <laughs> Later.